Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I was just in the process. I've got a bunch of uh, new diorama bases that I'm going to start building up and do a whole new line of dioramas for you guys. So I've got the bases, the foam, all kinds of stuff ready to go. And I was going to start cutting that all up and start designing them today when a new box came in the mail. And inside this box had some, some prototype copies of a new tank. Now, this is done in cooperation with MBK modeling and amusing hobby. Now MBK is the company that was doing the uh, the stuff das Werk with Ushi van der Rossen and now they're going to be doing some new tanks uh, never seen before stuff you know prototype stuff that never saw combat or anything but the very first one that's coming out and forgive me the way I've tried to pronounce this because this is one of those long German words that are for for me speaking English is really tough for but we'll try it and so I'm looking at here it's the Rutscher Panzer Kleine or Klein Zersterer, which basically what it was is a little five ton vehicle that BMW was developing. It had double barrel guns on the front of it here that were actually, uh, they shot with pressurized gas from what I understand, and it shot hollow shaped charges. So it wasn't a typical tank as you would have thought. It was probably going to be used more towards the end of the war. They started designing it in 1943. They only got as far as building wooden mock-ups of it based on what it says on the side of the box, a little bit of history on there. But it looks to be a, a cool little, never, never heard of it myself before, but it's a cool little vehicle that not very uh, difficult, only a couple sprues inside that we can knock apart and build it up and put a kind of a cool late war camouflage paint scheme on. Just something new and exciting. I thought I'd give it a shot. So let's get started on it. Okay, this is a, a quick little look at the uh, the parts of this kit since it's a uh, prototype and due to come out fairly soon. This is, I don't know if this is the way the box art is going to look or not. It might have a color box by the time it actually comes out. But you can see it's done by Amusing Hobby and the MBK. And this obviously is uh, prototype copies. The uh, the first thing we'll look at is the, uh, the main body sprue. So we have a multi-part uh, lower hull which will have all the detail on the side here, as well as kind of a, a high raised, uh, right, raised piece the way the general shape is. So that is part number one. And then you basically have two sprues, two identical sprues, which are gonna have the wheels, suspension, tracks, things like that. So it, it's gonna uh, basically appear to be a fairly simple kit. The, uh, the two double barrels are slide molded. So you can see right there, so you get a nice hollow tube for that. And there's no muzzle break or anything on it since they're pressurized gas shooting out a projectile. And the moldings all look to be pretty crisp and ready to go. So let's put it together and see what it looks like. Now the, uh, the, the chassis of the, or the hull of the vehicle is made up of individual parts, which I was doing a little test fitting on and they all seem to fit pretty well. So I'm going to put a a little bit of cement across the bottom down there and the kit itself is going to go together pretty pretty quickly and easily I think there's not a heck of a lot of parts involved in this in fact you can see I've started putting together some of the wheel assemblies which were were very very simple and easy to put together you know an A and B wheel and this particular vehicle is going to have the interlaced wheels that you'd see like on a Tiger or a Panther and just glue these up right here and won't really go too much into depth more on the hull because it's it's just this simple but uh, there is but what I wanted to show you on it there is a slight flaring out of the uh, the hull panels they aren't perfectly up and down they slightly uh, fan out to the side and that'll this piece back here will will line that up so not very difficult as you can see, but it's just a matter of getting them all lined up into the proper angles. And now with the uh, the sides glued on, we go ahead and start putting the uh, torsion bars into place. Now the torsion bar holes here are all square and they correspond to a square on the other side that pops in. 
you do have to just be, there is a little bit of play involved with these, so my advice to you would be, once you get them all on there, try to get them all lined up basically with the bottom edge of the hull here and let those dry and set up before you even lay it down. In fact, I'd let it rest like this. That way you're not putting any extra pressure on causing the uh, suspension to be all out of whack. Now we have all of the uh, suspension parts glued on. So we're just gonna go down the line and glue the wheels into place. And like I was telling you, they are the interlace. So you'll do every other road, every other suspension piece, I should say with a different type of wheel. Then you put the, the multi-piece one down the middle of those. And follow it up by the outer piece that'll go on here. So you'll have that. And of course I'm gonna glue all those on in a minute. The only thing I'm not going to glue on right away is gonna be the drive sprocket. And that is because the tracks on this vehicle are a link and length track. So I always find it a lot easier that if this is movable, just to get that track to wrap around just a little bit, it makes it a lot easier. So everything else will get glued on except for this, and then we can start on the tracks. Okay, we've got all of the uh, the wheels on, and this is just temporarily in place. We're just dry fitting it to see how it fits, and it seems to fit pretty well. And we're starting up the tracks. I've started gluing together all the little individual tracks as you've seen me do that in the past, and we've attached it onto the length piece. And then what we'll do is we'll be able to flex this right around the drive sprocket. We're gonna let that set up a little bit longer. One thing I should point out to you too though, is if you look at the, uh, the wheels on, get rid of this piece, the wheels on this vehicle, one side has one type of wheel, the other side is just the exact opposite. So remember that, keep an eye closely on the instructions. You don't wanna accidentally put the wrong one on the wrong side. And with the drive sprocket, actually we'll work on this side. This is what we kinda of got it set up for. With the drive sprocket in place, we should be able to line these tracks up and get them to, it's gonna be a little difficult, but you can see it just starts to wrap around and we'll work on getting them as nice and flat and smooth as possible. So you can see we've got, uh, not too, too difficult with the tracks. There is quite a bit of a push pin mark on the top of all the pieces that you're gonna have to sand out, which I've done right here. It's not impossible, it's just gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on all these tracks, get them to wrap around, because this is the next piece that'll get put into the uh, the row, Whoop, upside down though, and that will give us our two length pieces and then all the individual pieces make up the front and back. So I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. It shouldn't be very difficult and should go together pretty quickly. And finally, we've got the last 12 pieces of track that we will get to hopefully wrap right around here. Well, no, it said to use 12 pieces of track. Looks like it's only going to require oops, 11, so we're gonna have to take this apart a little bit. Okay, you can see I took the 12th track off here, but 11 was just a little bit too small for it. Uh, what I ended up doing was pulling and softening all the tracks and getting them to conform a little bit better, and that 12th track was able to fit on. And basically what you have to do is just adjust all of the tracks accordingly as you go and make them sag quite a bit. I did this on the other side and they fit really well. Okay, kind of flash forward just a little bit here and I'll show you what we've done. Obviously, we got all the tracks on. They were uh, pretty pretty decent. A uh, little, little finicky getting some around there, but nothing that we couldn't handle play around with it. We've also gone ahead and attached the barrel mechanism, which was just a grand total of three pieces inside there. Glued that up from up the bottom as well as the two periscopes. And then we've glued the top down, the top of the hull down to the lower hull. And I just started gluing on the, uh, the fenders. This fender is attached, this fender is not, but uh, there's grooves on the bottom of the fender here that line up to these. So the actual fit on the fenders works really well. And there's also a little notch up front here too that tells you where it actually goes. So we'll glue that last one into place. Then it is just a matter of going ahead. I gotta do a little bit more sanding on the barrels here, but they're gonna slide right into place like this. There's a flat 
grew our flat top on there that's the top of the barrel that will slide in equally there we've got a little gun shield that'll slide back on there and other than attaching little pieces which I'm sanding up right now like the uh, the muffler the little tail light as well as the little bit of hatches we probably got a grand total of like another maybe 10 15 minutes worth of construction on this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put those pieces on rather than you know show you all the little bits it's all very very simple and easy to do we'll let this fully dry for a couple hours come back and then we can start painting well here we are here is our completed model and by completed I mean all the parts are glued on and we've put a coat of XF69 NATO black and that is going to two reasons it's going to make a nice shadow coat for us as well as help us figure out any any flaws we might have in fact uh, after I'd put this on I had realized I hadn't painted or sanded the very fronts of these couple of track pieces so went and sanded them and then reapplied a coat of NATO black to it by uh, actually by brush just on the tips right there just to get those little push pin marks out now the kit overall very very easy and um, simple to put together the tracks can be a little finicky because of you know the type of track being link and link tracks but not much of a problem this is a grand total of about eight hours worth of work so a, a good uh, good example for our one day build the, uh, like I said all the parts were, were decent in the way they fit this is a very basic kit there is just three sprues in it and not a ton of little parts so definitely something that you can knock out uh, on a weekend including painting weathering and doing anything else you want with it okay so since we have the nato black on it now as well as a little bit of a dust from me sanding those other parts we're going to go ahead and spray the entire model now other than the tracks the xf60 the dark yellow so we're all ready to paint the dark yellow now, and I've taken some strips of cardstock, slid it underneath here for temporarily, and that is just so we don't get any overspray on the tops of the track while we're painting the upper part of the body here. Now we're going to use Tamiya's XF60 dark yellow, and I've slightly lightened it with a little uh, buff, XF57, 50-50 on it, because we want to make it look more like a late war dark yellow, which was a little bit, little bit more faded color for it. So, Let's go ahead and spray the entire vehicle with the dark yellow. Well, as you can see, I finished up the uh, the camouflage and didn't show much of the camouflaging being done and that was mainly because the vehicle's so small and you got to get in pretty tight to uh to get it on it so i just thought my, you're basically going to see the back of my hand most of the times and but now what we're doing is we've gone ahead and gloss coated the uh the vehicle we're going to put a little bit of mark fit strong on and see if we can get these decals to work now well i guess it doesn't really fit right there unless we wrap it around they don't really show you any markings or anything. They give you decals and, and numbers and for the Balkan crews and the numbers, but not any idea where they would go. So now we're going to do some light chipping. And we're just going to use that with our sponge, just the edge of the sponge dipped in our chipping color, which I will post right on the side of the page right now. Now we're using a real small amount of paint that we've blotted most of it off because we don't want to make the scratches too, too crazy here. Let's 
start working on the edges. And as you can see, this takes a little bit of time, but I think it adds a great effect to the vehicle. And it'll work on both the dark and the light. Obviously, it shows up a little bit better on the light, but it will you will notice it too inside the darker color green. Now we're actually taking the same piece of foam and using NATO black we're going over some of the other areas and this is going to give the chips and scratches a little depth because everything won't be the same color and you can even put some in the middle of those areas there and they actually turn out pretty good once we put the weathering on top of them so I've been going over most of the vehicle now we're chipping it up pretty decently we want this vehicle to look like it's been in combat don't forget the uh, the road wheels, especially the hubs too. Those would take some, some take a lot of wear and tear. And then basically any of the edges. Anytime a guy slides down something or drags something across, you're going to see a lot of a lot of wear and tear on that. I'm really kind of beating up these fenders a little bit more than normal too, because I th think it really looks good that way. Now I'm applying some rust colored wash, kind of thick, onto the muffler. And then we're going to use a variety of Vallejo pigments, including fresh rust, old rust, just all different kinds of uh, colors. We're going to just start blotting this in. let that dry and I know it looks a little a little crude right now but wait till that dries and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it does now we're going to put a little more of that same color rust color wash but on all these little chipped up areas and we're gonna go kinda light because we're gonna use a little grime some different colors of grime actually on this so we put a little bit of clean thinner down then we're going to use our rust wash and just kind of blot it over the areas and taking that same clean brush again pull down on those get them to blend right into the uh, in these top areas you can just kind of blot and because there's a little thinner left on here it's removing some of the of the rust color So I am going to go over the rest of the vehicle the same way and then we'll also go ahead and put our streaking grime the exact same way over the whole vehicle. And finally back here while this other stuff is drying we want to make some deeper shadows in these vents that are included. So we're just taking some Tamiya's black panel liner and just filling in the middle on there. And it'll give it a nice shadow effect to make it look like it has some depth to it. Well, here we are. Here's our completed model. And what I'll talk about first is just a few of the little weathering things that I did off camera that you guys have seen me do quite a few times. First of all, you can see that the muffler looks way different than what it originally looked like. And that is because we've rubbed most of the excess powders and uh, 
rust wash off of it and that was just to give it so you can see the chips coming through but still see a, a fair amount of rust on there also you'll notice the tracks the tracks have been liberally doused with light sienna pigment powder and that's been affixed with just enamel thinner and then once that dried we went over it and kind of brushed off some of the excess and then used a little little brown panel liner in between the track pads to kind of give it a little bit of a little bit darker effect in between all of that also I took a little bit of the light sienna and just lightly brushed it over the tank uh, it's very very subtle but a little bit is starting to build up into the little nooks and crannies along inside there and you can see we just dirtied it up just in general. Also went ahead and put uh, some pigmented wash. I, I believe this one right here was the streaking grime in all of these little bolt holes. And that just, just really made them pop out to give it some dimension to the vehicle. Now as for the tank, like I was telling you earlier, it's a very, very easy build. It's, uh, this is definitely a one day build for me. I got the entire thing done, painted everything all in one day. and it, really like the vehicle it's a it's a very unusual vehicle obviously it's uh, something you don't see all the time and it's very reminiscent of what the germans were working on with the e5 and the e5 was a real tiny little tank that was going to be uh, standardized like the e25 50 7500 tanks and it was just going to be a small one and having those two basically rpg barrels sticking out of it there since they weren't regular guns uh that could have been quite a little little deadly vehicle that could you know, take a couple of rounds off and then get the heck out of Dodge, so to speak, really fast. So it's a quite a formidable little vehicle. Now we wanted to try to beat it up a little bit more, kind of make it look like uh, Berlin 1945 type action on it. But uh, nice, nice kit overall. Not the most detailed kit in the world, but that's, you know, it's based on a prototype. So couldn't really ask for too much more on it. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.